Ken Rosenthal of The Athletic reporting that the San Francisco Giants are interested in trading for Brewers second baseman Colton Wong. We'll get into it next. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on the show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. Thank you for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Bet BetOnline has you covered this season. With more props, odds, and lines than ever before, Bet Online is where the game starts. And where we start today is talking about this report by Ken Rosenthal in The Athletic. It's amazing that a lot of these reports, like there's nothing on Aaron Judge, really airtight the Giants front office and organization as a whole, not leaking anything about their pursuit of Aaron Judge, which may end up resolving in the next few days here as the winter meetings kick off. So we'll get to that in a minute later. But uh, Colton Wong, there's a report from Ken Rosenthal who cites sources saying that the Giants are among the teams interested in Colton Wong. He he names the Dodgers first, and then he says the Giants and the Mariners are also among the teams that are showing interest in Wong. And so it's obviously significant. Wong is a established major league player, longtime Cardinal, known for being really good defensively at second base. But what's interesting is that in 2020, Two, he actually was not good at all, but he has a long track record of being quite good. And so this is something we discuss all the time on Locked on Giants, that single season uh, defensive metrics are just not necessarily something to get too worked up about. Uh, and and mostly it was outs above average that actually rated him so poorly defensively. Actually, ultimate zone rating as well. Negative one defensive run save, but This is a guy who in his career is at plus 55 defensive runs saved. Outs above average has been around not as long. They had him at negative nine this year, outs above average, and overall at plus five in his career. But again, it doesn't go back his whole career because outs above average is a somewhat more new metric here. But anyway, what Colton Wong is, is someone who I believe could be quite good defensively at second base. I guess it depends on what was behind the sudden severe regression in 2022, but also with shift restrictions in 2023 beginning, it's important to have someone who is better defensively at second base than maybe you were getting away with in the past. Like Wilmer Flores, Tommy La Stella, I'm just not sure these kinds of guys are going to work at second base under the new shift restrictions because you could just back them up into the outfield and range was less important, but now that's not true. And also, when you look at the projected Giants lineup, even if you add a guy like Aaron Judge, and actually this is something we're going to talk about later on as well, is this MLB Network tweet showing Aaron Judge in a projected lineup, and it kind of went viral because people are dunking on the Giants lineup. But one thing I've noticed when I kind of project out their lineup, even if you add a judge or a Correa or both, is that there's kind of a a lack of left-handed bats that you feel good about. There's some uh, there's uncertainty with guys like Lamont Wade, with Luis Gonzalez being in the mix, Brandon Crawford. Are you is he someone you want in the middle of your lineup, or is he someone you'd rather have much lower in your lineup? Obviously, you have Peterson, and you feel good about that. You also don't totally feel great about even Mike Yastrzemski. And so, I don't know, just adding an established left-handed bat and someone who could be quite good defensively at a position that is going to become more important to have good range and athleticism at that second base position, it makes a lot of sense to me. And Colton Wong is also, by the way, interesting offensively. He's someone who was really, really good this season at not swinging at pitches out of the strike zone. So the the strike zone kind of command was quite good for Wong. And he's also someone who makes a lot of contact and doesn't strike out. He hit 
15 homers and stole 17 bases in 2022 in only 497 plate appearances. He had a 339 on base percentage, which is very healthy, but he also has very stark career platoon splits. And so he is someone who would probably need to be platoon, but in a platoon, he's a pretty solid guy to have. Uh, he's, he's only played second base on the infield. He played very briefly, I think it was in 2016 in the outfield with the Cardinals, but he's essentially been a pure second baseman. Although I would imagine they would believe that he's a guy who would be capable of moving around a little bit. I don't know if he would be open to that, but part of what makes him attractive is that he's just under team control for one more year. It's not really, team control is kind of the wrong way to put it. He's under contract for one more year. He's owed, I think, $10 million in uh, 2023, and then that's the end of his contract and he would be back into free agency. And so, you know, the Giants like their one-year deals and at $10 million, there's not a ton of like surplus value. And so in theory, it wouldn't take all that much to acquire Colton Wong. Although if there's competition, you never know what the price might go up to. But a platoon player coming off the bad defensive year that he had and owed $10 million and only under team control for one year, it's just not going to cost you that much. And I think that he certainly wouldn't be the centerpiece of an offseason off or the centerpiece of a roster, but just as one of the, the useful players, uh, he's a good one to have around. And so I would not be upset at all. They would have a ton more to do. They still need that impact talent. This is not a guy who's going to necessarily give you that impact talent, but you know, a platoon at second base with like Tyro Estrada, who I'm not sure needs to be platooned, but that would be a pretty strong pairing. And so it is interesting, and I don't know exactly what the Brewers would want in return. The Giants do continue to have this surplus of kind of right-handed corner guys, and I don't know if that would be of interest to the Brewers. If you look at their depth charts, they've got guys like uh, Rowdy Telez at first base and uh, I mean, they've got some lefties that could be paired with some righties, although they have some platoon righties themselves with Mike Brasso and Keston Hira. But I don't know, J.D. Davis. And I mean, I don't think they're going to trade Wilmer Flores there, but I don't know. It's just something interesting to follow. And I thought it was noteworthy that Ken Rosenthal mentioned the Giants had interest. So coming up in just a minute, we're going to talk about that, that tweeted out lineup that kind of went viral when, with people dunking on the Giants projected lineup even with Aaron Judge we're going to discuss the state of the Giants and their lineup in just a minute but before we do this episode is brought to you by Bet Online betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting info stats news and analysis get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer and esports we've got it all at Bet Online and i don't know if it's because my listeners flooded their uh, website and took the bet that I kept saying was a good opportunity. But remember, I've been saying the implied odds of Aaron Judge going to the Giants if he leaves the Yankees were only 33% in what Bet Online was offering. Well, that has now changed in a major way. They've taken that one down. And now the there's no more like odds if he leaves the Yankees. Now it just says, what are the odds of Aaron Judge's next team? And it has the Giants as the odds-on favorite ahead of the New York Yankees. So the the line has dramatically changed. I just thought that was really interesting. I hope you took the opportunity when when it was out there to take much better odds from a from a you know chance he goes to the Giants perspective. But this is some of the stuff you can check out at Bet Online. They also have had Carlos Correa odds, which I think go up for the Giants if the Giants don't sign Aaron Judge. I think it would go up a lot in terms of the actual likelihood. So head to, head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online is where the game starts. Okay, as promised, we are going to discuss this viral tweet that uh, had, you know, it, it was a tweet saying, here's the Giants projected lineup if they add Aaron Judge. And then it just doesn't look so good. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked on Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked on can provide. Locked on Sports today is available on this this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. So 
there's a, there's a lot to say about this this kind of projected lineup for the Giants in that on the one hand, you look at it and you do say, wow, that doesn't look very good. But on the other hand, I went through and I looked at, okay, how have these players done in the last few years? And each and every one of the guys, except for Joey Bart, and at the leadoff spot, they actually have, they're actually showing uh, Luis Gonzalez and uh, Lamont Wade Jr. as options there. And of course, you wouldn't have both. You would only have one. So I've been scrolling through Twitter trying to find it, and I found it. They've got it, uh, Lamont Wade Jr. leading off, Aaron Judge second, Jock Peterson third, J.D. Davis fourth, Yastrzemski, Flores, Crawford, Estrada, and Bart. And so you look at that, and I feel you. Like, I look at that, and I'm like, ugh, (laughs) that doesn't look so good. But at the same time, like I was just saying, okay, they're showing two guys at the top. So, okay, we'll put Luis Gonzalez on the bench. I don't know why they're showing two guys. They're just saying either or, take your pick. But we'll go with Wade here. Every single one of these guys, except for Joey Bart, if you look at the last three seasons, has been above average by weighted runs created plus. Above average offensive players. And I get it. It's not exciting, and maybe it's more mid than uh, good. But at the same time, there are a lot of lineups out there that are significantly below average. And if you look at if you if you were to look at like a projected Angels lineup, it would just be much more exciting adding an Aaron Judge or something, but that is a team, even with Mike Trout and Shohei Otani, Anthony Rendon, I know he didn't play a lot, but is on that roster, Taylor Ward having like a really, really good season, they still were significantly worse offensively than the San Francisco Giants. They scored fewer runs, their weighted runs created plus was worse. The Giants scored an, an above average amount of runs with essentially this lineup. It's not like they had major players departing like reaching free agency right now the only guy you can really point to is Brandon Belt who wasn't very good offensively for the Giants in 2022 and didn't play a lot so on the one hand it's kind of yuck looking at this lineup but on the other hand it is lacking in impact but actually every single one of those guys except for Joey Bart has been above average if you if you look at the last three seasons. And that's kind of the convention is to look at three seasons. That's what teams do when they're evaluating players. They don't just look at what did they do last year. They look at what have they done in recent years. And uh, you weight the most recent year more heavily, of course. And also, when you're older players, you also worry about decline, of course. And so I'm not denying, like when I look at this, I'm not denying that you need to do something with this. You can't, this can't be your lineup. Like even if they add Aaron Judge, I have, find me a time when I've said, yes, Aaron Judge is all they need to do. I have said by their Zips projection, which by the way, is basically this lineup minus Aaron Judge and Dan Zimborski's Zips projections have them at 83 wins. And so I think it's just a little bit weird because they're like, more than half of the lineups in the league that might some might look significantly better and yet they're going to perform worse and so the Giants they kind of get the most out of their guys and there's I mean this lineup has Tyro Estrada hitting eighth and Estrada was a quality player for them hit I think he was 15 homers 15 steals 15 plus homers 15 plus steals it might have been like 14 homers 17 steals or something which sounds very similar to what we just read off with Colton Wong. But yeah, so if you can move some of these guys to the bench and then add some more impactful players, then the Giants could be in pretty good shape. And so I think it's a little bit of an overreaction to say that this is so bad when this is essentially the lineup they had last year and they scored an above average number of runs. So it's just hard to really dunk on them too hard when we look at it that way. But again, I do not want anyone to interpret this as me saying, Therefore, they don't need to do much. I think that they do. And if they were to add Aaron Judge, I have been advocating that I think that they should still go out and try to get a Carlos Correa and that they still should go out and get a true center fielder. 
and they still maybe need to address first base and they still could afford to add a guy like Colton Wong and they still could afford to add at the catcher position. Like I mentioned, the only guy here who's been below average has been Joey Bart and it's been way below average. If we look at the last three years, I think the weighted runs created plus is like 83, about 20 points below average, whereas everybody else has been above 100, above league average. So they've got a lot of work to do. Aaron Judge undoubtedly knows the state of the roster. It's not like he's going to see this tweet and be like, oh my God, I hadn't thought about that. So as John Paul Morosi has mentioned like in his reporting about the Giants' interest in Aaron Judge, they would need to convince him and present him with a actionable plan, essentially, to show that they are going to do more than just add, add Aaron Judge. And so we've all known this all along, that uh, if you're going to convince a player like Judge that that it's worth coming here, they're going to have to surround him with better pieces. And so everybody understands that. And yeah, the winter meeting's kicking off on Sunday, and we've been told that potentially on Friday and Saturday, meaning today and tomorrow, there could start. We could start to see the activity begin. And so I'm very excited, and it's very likely or possible at least that an Aaron Judge decision would be made by the end of the winter meetings, which essentially wrap up on Tuesday night. Uh, They go into Wednesday morning, but that's all about the Rule 5 draft. The real activity is going to be Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And I would expect an Aaron Judge decision to come by the end of Tuesday. That would be the most likely scenario, in my opinion. So coming up in just a minute, we're going to get to a few more mailbag questions, including how positive or negative do I feel about the progress of younger guys on the roster like Estrada, Bart, and David VR. So we'll get to that question and more in just a minute. But first... All right, as promised, just getting to some mailbag questions. We've still got a ton left over. I think these were from last week, and there's still a lot left. But Rick asks, how positive slash negative are you regarding the progress of the younger guys on the roster, particularly Estrada, Bart, and VR? So these are three interesting guys, and all of them I have a different take on. So for Estrada, I think the breakout was real, and he he had a very good season for the Giants. And like I was just saying, in this projected lineup, having him eighth is nothing to scoff at at all. Estrada is 26 years old. He just had a season. Yeah, he hit 14 homers and and stole 21 bases, hit 260, which is significantly better than average, believe it or not. 322 on base, which is better than average. Ended up with a 107 weighted runs created plus 2.7 Fangraphs wins above replacement, which is just above average across the board. Is is essentially what Estrada gave them, and we kind of slept on it. I mean, he the breakout happened last year, and in 2021. He was good with the Giants as well. So in his Giants career, he's got a 109 weighted runs created plus 21 homers, 22 steals in just over a full season's worth of work. And so he's a solid player and I'm very happy with his progress and he's under team control for four additional seasons. And so his emergence is is a big deal. He shouldn't be carrying your team, but as a complimentary piece, his progress has been excellent and it's it's a it's a great development for the Giants regarding Joey Bart some people don't like when I say this but his progress has not been so so great and yes he had that that good stretch in the middle of 2022 and that was great to see where he was making more contact striking out less impacting the ball more and that's what he needs to do but As the year went on, he actually reverted back. If you look at like the rolling strikeout rate, which takes like a 15 game average and rolls it like so each new game, it looks at the most recent 15 games and then one more game into the future. It looks at those most recent 15 games. And if you look at the the graph of like the strikeout rate, it was up near 50 percent. Then he had that demotion and came back and then it got down to a reasonable level closer to 30 percent for a. A little while. And then if you look at the last month plus of the season, it's back up to around 50%. And so all in all, Joey Bart, he had a 38.5% strikeout rate. He had a 215 batting average. He had a 296 on base percentage. He had a 364 slugging, which is nothing spectacular. And so I have concerns. I've had concerns all along and I have concerns now. And if you yeah, if you beef up the rest of your roster and you can just kind of let him 
hopefully develop uh, out of the nine spot in your order, that's fine. But it's it's definitely a position where they could afford to upgrade, and there are some intriguing options out there with Sean Murphy of the Oakland A's. These are trade candidates. Uh, and then the Toronto Blue Jays have three quality catchers, and they're likely to trade one. And so, yes, there are other teams that need catchers. There's also Wilson Contreras is out there, but maybe not great defensively or at least as a framer. I thought Joey Bart did a, a an admirable job and showed progress like with his demeanor and leadership and uh, was good defensively, I think. But the bat can be like if you're going through stretches where you're striking out half the time, it can really be a problem. And that's what we saw for two significant stretches during 2022. And so that's kind of the state of it. And if you look at it, Austin Wins actually had a better offensive season by Weighted Runs Created Plus. Wins really improved towards the last couple months of the year and kind of threw out better plate appearances than what they were getting from Bart. And so it's going to be fascinating to see if they do anything at the catcher position. I've heard a lot of people say, you know, get this guy and pair him with Bart. But really, I thought Austin Wins did a quite, quite a nice job towards the end of the season. Was good defensively. Guys loved throwing to him. Good framer, I thought. I think they both rated as like around league average at framing. And I don't know, wins. He makes a lot of contact, not a lot of power, but there's just a kind of a, a tenacity at the plate, perhaps. And I thought he did a good job. In terms of David VR, he's super intriguing. And uh, whether it's, I mean, he becomes an interesting trade candidate. If the Giants are trying to make a significant splash in a trade, I think David VR is a guy who would be appealing to some teams. He ended up winning the MVP of the Pacific Coast League uh, this year for what he did. He hit 27 homers in AAA in only 84 games. He ended up with a 124 weighted runs created plus at the major league level. Hit 231 with a 331 on base, 455 slugging, 9 homers in only 52 games. And if you look at the steamer projection for David VR, it's... In 109 games, they have him projected to hit 20 home runs. So if you project that out over 140 games, you know, you're closer to 25, 30 home runs in terms of the projection here. Projected at a 112 weighted runs created plus 1.9 fan graphs wins above replacement. So that's essentially an above average player is what he's being projected at by Steamer. And yes, there was a somewhat high strikeout rate of 32%. The contact rate wasn't high enough, but the chase rate was was solidly better than average and the power solidly better than average. Don't know exactly what you're going to get defensively. He had some gaffes at third base, but as a corner guy, third, first, DH, uh, he's super intriguing. And whether it's, like I said, if they want to give him that opportunity in the majors with the Giants or if he if they really want to make a you know, a significant trade acquisition in the offseason, he's a guy who could be uh, potentially available. Not that you want to just give up on a promising young player, but they they have quite a few of these kind of right-handed corner infielders with Flores and VR and J.D. Davis. And so one of those guys, I doubt Flores, but maybe Davis or VR, you could end up seeing moved in a trade this offseason. But Super happy with what we saw, especially he struggled in his first stint and then went down and then came back and was was really good. And so uh, feeling good about David VR. It's just a matter of can they squeeze in the playing time for him and let him develop. And we shall see. Anyway, that is all the time we have for today. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Locked on Sports today. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions. Big game recaps and the take of the day available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. Check me out on Twitter at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out a lot. So thank you in advance. And thanks to everyone who's done so already. Now, the winter meetings get underway this weekend. And if anything major happens, we are going to do an emergency podcast and You know, I imagine that on Monday there's going to be some stuff to talk about. So check us out. It's going to be your number one stop uh, for winter meetings, reactions, Aaron Judge potentially coming off the board. So it's going to be great. And I hope to see you on the other side. So have a great weekend. 
Thanks again for listening. You are now Locked on Giants.